In the last video, we started this double pendulum problem. And what we did is we, we figured out, oh, we should have two, two degrees of freedom or two generalized coordinates. And then we looked at our equations of constraint and said, you know what, these, these angles here, theta, they look like they'll be pretty useful. And then we proceeded to reason through what these things should be and, and write them out. So we have our x1, y1, x2, y2, all in terms of theta1 and theta2. Now in this video, we're going to write out our Lagrangian and, and see what happens. All right. So the Lagrangian. L equals t minus u. Or we could say that it equals t1 uh, plus t2 plus t2 minus minus u1 minus u2. Right, so we can write down a term based on each of these each of these pendulum bobs or each of these objects or points separately. Now let's write out t1 So if we take the derivative of sine, we'll get cosine, right? And then when we do the chain rule, we'll have to multiply by the derivative of theta 1 with respect to time. So that's just theta dot or theta 1 dot, right? So we'll get a theta 1 dot with the chain rule coming out here. And we'll get the same thing here, right? So there will be a theta 1 dot coming out of these things. And then they'll both be squared, right? Cosine squared plus sine squared. Does that look familiar at all? Well, turns out it's just 1. So t1 doesn't look too bad, and this is actually what we got in the, in the other video with just, a, with just a single pendulum. Right, so there's t1. So I'll circle that, or put it in a box here. This is t1. So don't forget that. And now let's look at t2. T2 will end up being our most complicated looking um, function or, or piece of this Lagrangian. So T1 or T2. So this here is our T2. So I'll put this in a box. T2. T2. Right? Here it is. All right, and if we think about this, we can sort of see where the terms come from a little bit. So so the mass times L2 L1 squared plus L L1 squared times theta 1 dot squared. That's the same term, or it's very similar to the term we had with T1, right? We had this here. So we can think of it as being composed of a few parts. One of them is, is just the swinging of theta 1. And it has an equation similar to the equation for just the single pendulum. So here theta 1 is swinging. Here it's the same thing, except it's theta 2 and L2. So this is the swinging of theta 2 by itself. You can think of it that way. And then here, this came from the cross terms, and, and it has both, right? It has, actually, I should make this purple again so it pops out. So it actually is made of a mixture and the difference of the two angles. So it, this is this interaction term between the two pendulums. And it's, it's kind of cool that we can actually sort of see the different contributions the way we might sort of think of it if we were just sort of waving our hands around and saying, well, it's kind of like both of them added together, but a little different. So enough of my rambling. This is T2. And now we will find U1 and U2. 
So now let's look at U1, U1 here. All right, I guess I'll just keep going down. U1, U1. So here's our U1. And now let's do U2. So U2. And now with that we have our entire Lagrangian all, all in terms of these angles. So let's write it out and say L, L equals, which, what did I use for L? L equals All right, so here is our Lagrangian. It looks pretty long, right? A lot of times when you're asked to do this problem or a problem like it, you'll you'll be told you can assume that M1 and M2 are equal, that the, the masses of the two pendulum bobs are the same, and that the length of the two of the two strings or the two rods are the same. And and if that were the case, then a lot of this would sort of collapse down and and a lot of these terms would combine and, and they squish together. But in that case, you sort of start to lose where all of these things come from, right? This is the kinetic energy of the first pendulum, right? Kinetic energy of the second pendulum. And you can see you can see the different parts as we, we talked about before. The equations become less understandable, even though they're shorter, I think. And in the next video, we will put this into the Euler-Lagrange formula and and get our equations of motion.